Hi, welcome to the MEAP 20S videos. In this video, what I'm going to talk about is kind of the pre stuff that you need to know for the trigonometry unit for chapter two. So we're calling it 2.0 preamble for trigonometry. Uh, it's not exactly found in the textbook because it's what you already need to know. Manitoba outcome outcome M4 and uh, there's going to be a total of five videos for this chapter. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to look at is the sum of angles in a triangle and sum basically means addition. So we're going to look at what do all of the angles in a triangle add up to? Uh, well, we learned before that these all add up to 180 degrees. So they all equal 180 degrees. Okay, you need to remember that. Now, uh, let's say that this angle right here was 90. Okay, and we indicate that with a little square. And this angle right here is going to be 25 degrees. So we'll write in 25 with a little degree symbol. And so what is this angle going to be right here? What is this third angle going to be? Well, in order to find that out, well, we know that all of them add up to 180 degrees. So I can basically take away the 90 that I know right here and the 25 that's right here. And that gives me an answer of 65 degrees. So this angle here that we're looking for is 65 degrees. Okay, now it doesn't matter what kind of a triangle, all triangles are, uh, they hold the same property. So this blue triangle that we have down here, uh, we're going to have the same situation. So if I have this angle as let's say it's 62 degrees and this angle right here is 65 degrees what is this third angle going to be right here well same idea uh, 180 minus 62 minus 65 and that gives us 53 so this is a 50, 53 degree angle right there Okay, uh, now this last and final triangle here in yellow, we've got, let's say right here, well, let's, let's mark this down as a 90 degree angle, okay? Um, and then let's say this one is uh, a 53 degree angle. Uh, so what is this third angle going to be? All right, so this third angle right here, what is it going to be? Uh, I'll give you a second to figure it out. Do, 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 do. do you have it yet? Okay, so it is 180 minus 90 minus 53 degrees, which gives us 37 glorious degrees. All right, so that's that angle right there. And if you add up all the angles inside of a triangle, they should always add up to 180 degrees. Okay, on to the next one. All right, so now we're going to look at naming triangles. Um, we're going to do it a little differently than what you've done in the past. I'm going to show you both ways. This uh, this way is a little more efficient when we're using formulas and stuff. So let's say we call this, uh, let's look at the top triangle here in white, and let's label it ABC, kind of what we're standard used to looking at, right? So let's call that angle B, angle A, sorry, angle B, and angle C. So back in the day, what you would do is you would label this side here, you would label it BC, right? Okay, and this side right here, you would label it line segment AB. And this side right here, you would label it line segment AC. And you would indicate that with a little line 
over top each of those, right? So that you know you're talking about a line segment. What we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how we label it using the opposite angle. So do you notice how we have uh, this angle right here uh, and this the side opposite is BC? Well, instead of calling it BC, I'm going to call it lowercase a, okay? And I'll write that in pink so that uh, it's emphasized a little bit. So the, a, the side opposite the angle, so I'm going to do that kind of thing. So we've got a capital A here. This is going to be a lowercase a, and we're going to call it side lowercase a. We just re refer to it as side a. So right here we've got angle capital B, and then the side opposite to that is lowercase b, and then here we've got our angle c, and the side opposite to that is labeled as lowercase side c. So we put in, we call it a lowercase side c. Okay. So let's call this triangle, this blue one here, uh, d, uh, e up here, and F. Okay, so how are we going to label the sides? Well, that one is lowercase f. Uh, this one here is lowercase e. And that one there is lowercase d. Okay, let's do this again just for fun. Doesn't matter what the angles are labeled. Uh, so let's say this is capital X, that's capital Y, and capital Z. So that side there, this whole side, is called lowercase z. Uh, this opposite to there is this whole side here. That's called lowercase y. And over here, that whole side right here, this is lowercase, whoops, lowercase x. Let's do a better job of writing that x. Okay, there, lowercase x. And it just makes life a little easier when you're uh, using labels of sides and formulas and stuff. Okay, let's go on to the next. Okay, so now this one, everyone's favorite, Pythagorean Theorem. So, Pythagoras, we all remember this. Uh, and this one says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, remember in our ABC triangle, we've got a... B, C, okay? So basically here, C is where your 90 degree is. This is your 90 degree. And you've got your hypotenuse here, which is the largest side of the triangle. So this is your lowercase c, this is your lowercase b, and this is your lowercase a. So let's actually do an example where we're using the numbers here. Uh, okay, so let's say, for example, that this side is 7, uh, this side is 5, and we want to try to figure out what C is. Okay, so let's put it into the formula. We've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and you want to figure out the value of C. So plug in what you know, and let's try to find what we don't know. So that's a 7, okay, and that equals c squared. So then we want to evaluate 5 squared, so 5 squared is 25. Evaluate 7 squared, that's 49, and that all together equals c squared. Okay, so now 25 plus 49 is 74, and that's c squared, but we want to figure out what c is, so how do we do that? Square root both sides. So in order to find c, we take the square root of 74, and that actually works out to be rounding to one decimal point, 8.6. So the value of c, right here, we can go back and write it in, is 8.6. Okay, uh, now let's try an example here with the uh, yellowish green triangle, where we are given a value for c, so let's say that's 32. And then let's be given uh, this side here. Let's say that's 6.2. Uh, 
Okay, and I'll mark in that this is a right triangle, and Pythagoras can only be used for right triangles, right? Uh, and we need to figure out what this is. Okay, so we need to figure out this side here. Uh, so this we know is our hypotenuse, it's side C. This is uh, one of the sides, it doesn't matter, you can pick A or B, so let's just call it A for argument's sake. And then we need to figure out what this is, and that would be our B value. Okay, so I know that C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Okay, so C has a value of 32, so uh, we're going to square that, and A has a value of 6.2, so that's squared, plus B. I don't know what my B is, so I'm going to solve for that. Uh, so evaluate 32 squared, so that's uh, 1024, and evaluate 6.2, which is 38.44, and add on your B squared. I don't have a value for that. So let's solve for B squared. So B squared is 1024 minus 38.44 and then I get B squared equals um, 985.56 and I'm not done because I need to figure out what the value of B is, right? So in order to figure out the value of B, I have to square root both sides. So square rooting uh, both sides to get B, I get the square root of 985.56, and that works out to 31.39 uh, and I'm just going to round it off to 31.4. So. That's how you use uh, Pythagoras. Um, just remember that when you are given, uh, when you're given the two sides and not the hypotenuse, when you need to look for the hypotenuse, you can just use this formula as is. But if you are given, if you have, uh, if you already have the, sorry, if you already have the hypotenuse here like we did and you need to solve for one of the other missing sides, that you're going to have to do a bit of rearranging just like we did here. So take a look at this and make sure that you notice uh, what we've done here, okay? And then uh, your other side that you're looking for always needs to be smaller than uh, your hypotenuse, because your hypotenuse is the longest length of your triangle. Okay, good luck, folks.